Tonight, text largest companies lobby against NSA surveillance, how to Spotify your Uber ride, and send cash through Snapchat. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 217 for Monday, November 17th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Now introducing Squarespace 7 with even better site management tools and other improvements. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. The Beijing Municipal Bureau of Public Security has announced on Sinoweibo, a Chinese microblogging service, not unlike Twitter, that authorities have shut down the websites responsible for the wire lurker malware and arrested suspects in the case. Wire lurker has gotten a lot of security attention as of late as a new type of malware that could attack non-jailbroken iOS devices through apps in third-party app stores. Security firm Palo Alto Networks first publicly revealed the threat and described how malware running on Mac OS X could download the malicious apps from third-party stores and then when it detected an iOS device connected through a USB port, install malicious apps on the device. The attackers used enterprise certificates to sign the apps, which Apple has since revoked. The Chinese authorities say that three suspects are under arrest for making and distributing the malware and that the site is shut down. The Reform Government Surveillance Coalition, which includes Facebook and Google and Twitter and Microsoft and Apple, big companies, is lobbying to curb the U.S. National Security Agency surveillance powers and more transparency on government data requests. The coalition added its support for the race to pass the USA Freedom Act bill through the U.S. Senate before the end of the year. The bill would also allow technology companies to disclose the number and the types of data demands from government as part of a transparency push from the industry. The Senate Vote is set for tomorrow, November 18th, but it is unclear whether enough senators will vote in favor of the bill to keep it going. Uber and Spotify, kind of an unlikely team, but they have teamed up so that riders can play tunes from Spotify during their Uber ride. So this is how it works. After you hail a car via Uber, you could then decide what music you'd like to hear and then have the car arrive while playing that music already when it picks you up. And you can control the music for the duration of the trip once you connect your paid streaming account inside Uber's app to opt in. The partnership will launch on November 21st in London, Los Angeles, Mexico City, Nashville, New York, San Francisco, Singapore, Stockholm, Toronto, and Sydney with a larger rollout in the next few weeks. The driver also needs to connect their phone to the car's stereo in order for you as the rider to take advantage, although Uber claims drivers are excited about playing all your music. Yeah, I bet they're really just so very excited. Apple announced today that App Store customers in China can now link their union pay debit or credit cards to their Apple IDs for purchases. If you're not familiar with union pay, China Union Pay is a bank card network approved by China's state council and the People's Bank of China and has issued more than 4.5 billion cards in China. It's available in all cities as well as an overseas market. It's also the only interbank network in mainland China to link all ATMs, so Chinese merchants have to use union pay to process payments as well as foreign credit card companies like Visa, MasterCard, and American Express, which pay union pay a fee for each transaction. Previously, customers made payments on the App Store through a telecom operator like China Mobile, for example, with their credit cards or through prepayments. Speaking of making payments, today, ephemeral messaging service Snapchat, that's popular with all the kids and some adults too, announced a new way for users to swap money with each other inside the app. Joining us with the details is Harry McCracken, technology editor for Fast Company. Hey, Harry. Hey, Sarah. Good to have you back. Um, and I, I have to say today, my first reaction when I heard that I could send you money as my Snapchat friend from within the app, I, I just kind of had to scratch my head and say, well, but why would I do that? Isn't Snapchat about messages that go away after 10 seconds or so? How is this going to work? That's a really good question, especially because Snapchat says that it doesn't really test things with real people ahead of time. So the only people who have done this so far are Snapchat employees. But basically, um, if you're talking to a friend and you mention wanting to send them $5, Snapchat can recognize you said that. And uh, it's working with Square to do this. Square has a similar service called Square Cash that works through email. Mm -hmm. so if you don't already have a Square account, you will then be prompted to sign up for 
a Square Cash account, which is really quick and easy and involves you putting in your debit card. And uh, from then on, it's, it sounds like it's going to be about as simple as sending cash to another person can be. It's interesting to me that Snapchat and Square have teamed up. Square has a variety of products. In fact, they just uh, you know, deprecated one of the Square wallet apps that I that I use all the time. But Square Cash, as you mentioned, uh, it works over email. It, it works very well. There's also a standalone app. What do you you know? Does Square want to be part of Snapchat just because Snapchat is so hot right now and has so many users? Well, for the last year or so, Square has been rolling out new services constantly to kind of roll out its portfolio. And despite the fact that Square Cash is really neat, I, I don't get a sense that it's enormously popular. And this sounds like it's a way to take the technology that Square developed for Snapcash and bring it to a really large audience of people. The question is whether that large audience of people wants to send cash through Snapchat or not. And I think that's yet to be seen. We've also heard Facebook Messenger will eventually allow you know us the chance to to, to swap money back and forth um, from within the Facebook Messenger app. There are other apps that provide this service already. And then, of course, there are a lot of just standalone services that 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 offer this as well. Venmo is one that I use all the time, but obviously PayPal has some options as well. <sighs> does an, does a service like Snapchat, which is all about messages that you know self destruct and and don't stay forever, is it the right place for for payments? It, does it does it make does it make sense for the user? Uh, and do you think enough people will say, oh yeah, that this is where I can do this? Are they hanging out in Snapchat long enough to to even take advantage of payments? Yeah, I mean, my guess is that Snapchat does not see this as like an, an enormous potential windfall. They're also doing advertising. They, they just rolled out ads about a month ago. Uh, they have a challenge there, too, just because it's not entirely clear whether great big companies are going to be comfortable having their ads show up in the context of, of Snapchat messages. Uh, I mean, my sense is that in general, Snapchat has not yet figured out how it's going to make money and the fact that it's been valued at $10 billion means that investors are confident there's a lot of money to be made there, but it's not quite clear how it's going to happen. And it might be a mixture of things. It might be a little bit of advertising, a little bit of, of exchanging money, and, and maybe other things yet to be seen. Could you imagine a, a, a Snapchat world where if you really want to see one of these cool pictures that I'm dangling in front of you, you, know, you have to pay a couple bucks? Or do you think that that's not really the way that Snapchat's going, if, if it does have to figure out some, some more monetization options down the road? Generally speaking, social networks uh, don't get big by charging people to see stuff. It's, yeah. it's the same reason why to this day, if you go to Facebook and are signing up for the first time, almost the first thing it tells you is, Facebook is free, and it's going to be free forever. Charging for content doesn't seem to work. Harry McCracken is the technology editor over at Fast Company. Thanks for joining us, Harry, and giving us a little more insight on what Snapcash is going to be like. And before you go, let folks know where they can keep up with your work. You can find me on fastcompany.com, and on Twitter, I am at Harry McCracken. Excellent. Thanks so much, Harry. Thank you. Coming up, Facebook wants you to use Facebook at work, but not not to waste time, wants you to be productive while doing it, and how New York City plans to turn old phone booths into new Wi-Fi pods. Interesting. But first, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. It's the all-in-one platform that makes it easy and fun to create your own professional website or online portfolio. I've been using Squarespace for years, and what's always fun is every couple of years they've they've got a new version that's just better than the last. And Squarespace Seven is that newest version. It makes getting started easier than ever. If you've ever felt like, oh man, new site putting it together, it's I'm very overwhelmed. Squarespace Seven is the platform for you. You can live edit on just one screen. You don't have to toggle between your site managers and preview modes and the way other other blogging services often work. You can preview designs in device mode. That means you can see how your site's going to look on the web or various tablets or mobile. You want to make sure it looks good, right? Because people are going to access it from a lot of different places. You also have instant access to professional stock photography from Getty. Squarespace now allows direct purchases inside Squarespace from Getty Images at just 10 bucks each. Instant branded email setup with Google Apps. That's another fun perk. Now you have branded email for your small business automatically set up when you sign up for a Squarespace account. And 
they've also designed category-specific templates that cater to different industries. Maybe you're a musician or an artist or, an, or, or a chef or an architect. The new Horizon template, for example, is laid out for bands. So you could, you could show people tour dates easily and, and have a music player embedded in a merchandise store. Speaking of merchandise, e-commerce is available for all subscription plan levels, including the ability to accept donations. And Squarespace plans start at just $8 per month. It's really inexpensive. That includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Hosting included as well. It's all one. Mobile ready, Squarespace portfolio, note, metric, and blog are all mobile apps that are basically an extension of your website as you're out and about. So you can monitor and make changes anywhere you are. Note and blog apps are also on Android too. Like I mentioned, hosting is included. Squarespace takes care of everything so you don't have to. You can start a free two-week trial with no credit card required. Start building that website today. Decide to sign up for Squarespace? Well, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT, that's T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T, and get 10% off. And you also show your support for us. And to begin using Squarespace 7, existing customers go to the settings tab and activate all the new features. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. A better web awaits you. And it starts with your new Squarespace website. All right, on to a few more stories that we are following today. The Financial Times reports that Facebook is working on a professional version of its network. They're citing anonymous sources, but the way it would work is it would be an enterprise-focused product that would reportedly be similar to the functionality of Facebook as we know it today with a news feed and group functionality and messaging features, but would also include collaborative tools for work on shared documents. Facebook at work would apparently be totally separate from any personal account. So no information from a user's social profile would be appearing on his or her professional profile or page. Facebook at work is said to be in an early pilot program now, though a Facebook representative declined to comment. Really wouldn't surprise me though. It seems like Facebook should have on this a long time ago, in fact. Tom Wheeler, chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, has proposed a 62% increase in the amount of money that the agency spends annually to wire schools and libraries with high-speed internet. The annual cap on spending for school internet could be raised by $1.5 billion to $3.9 billion. That's according to an FCC official speaking to the New York Times. The new spending would lead to an increase of roughly 16% in the monthly fee on consumers' phone bills. Now, that might freak you out, but it ends up being not that, it's somewhat negligible as a, uh, as a raised fee. The fee is used to finance the Universal Service Fund, an $8.7 billion effort that provides phone and broadband connections for low-income populations and rural areas and schools and libraries. Greater spending for Wi-Fi and fiber optic lines is needed, say FCC officials, because schools serving more than 40 million students say that they don't have broadband connections that are fast enough to take advantage of the most digital learning features. The New York City Mayor's Office has announced the winning bid to transform the city's existing payphone infrastructure. Yes, there are apparently a lot of payphones left in the five boroughs of New York. And the winner is Link NYC, which will bring gigabit Wi-Fi connectivity to around 7,000 street towers, one of the biggest citywide Wi-Fi networks in the world. Now, earlier this year, you might recall, New York put out a request for proposals for plans to overhaul this existing payphone system, which wasn't really doing much for anybody anymore. Link NYC will bring fast connectivity and other services via 11-inch slim aluminum stands that are called links, along with an antenna providing 150-foot Wi-Fi radius. Uh, 9.5-foot towers will have built-in Android tablets with a series of preloaded apps as well as a charging station for your own personal gear. Links are also still phones and will provide free calling capability to all 50 states. Finally, have you heard of a startup called Nightscope? Like K-N-I-G-H-T Scope. It's based in Mountain View, California. No, no. Well, this company is testing a new kind of security guard robot known as the K-5, which is designed to detect unusual behavior like somebody walking through a building at night or something that seems like, mm, is this really supposed to be happening? Then the uh, robot will report back to a remote security center. The K-5 uses HD cameras and sensors and navigation equipment and electric motors all inside a kind of dome-shaped body with a big battery and a computer. GPS and a laser ranging instrument would help the robots find their way around a patrol area and then avoid obstacles when they're on duty. If they're taken to a new place, 
A human with a wireless controller can show the robot around to determine the area it will patrol and let it learn about its surroundings. Over a million human security guards were employed in the U.S. last year. This is according to an estimate from the U.S. Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor Statistics. But... An hourly wage that a human guard earned is more than twice the $6.25 that Nightscope says it will charge for its robots, which could obviously tempt companies, schools, and other facilities to possibly switch over to the dark side. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. They're actually kind of cute, aren't they? A little dome shape. You can subscribe to the show if you're enjoying it at twit.tv slash TN2. We do one every day. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv with feedback. And, of course, you can watch live at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. Don't miss Tech News Today. That airs 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern in the mornings. That's tomorrow and every day until Saturday. And then we take the day off. I'm Sarah Lane. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.